Today on Blog Success Journal, Web Hosting 101, what are my web hosting options? So what are your options when you're gonna start a new site? What do you do? Because a lot of people have that question because that's the first thing you have to do and nobody knows how to do it. Yeah, and it's not just a list of these are the three web hosts to choose from. They're the types of web hosting. So. Yeah, and today we're talking about the types of web hosting. The first one and the cheapest one is shared web hosting, okay? It's basically a bunch of websites on one big old server and everybody shares the same resources. Um, they're really cheap. You can get them under $10, even under $7 a month. They're cheap. It's easy to set up. and. The only disadvantage to that one is if somebody screws up or somebody gets a big traffic spike, guess what? Your site may go down with theirs. Yeah. Get what you pay for, I guess. Yeah. So that's a great way to start. Number two, a dedicated server. Now, and this is nice because you're not sharing that, the physical server with anyone else. Uh, you've got it all to yourself. But here's the thing. The web hosting options have changed a lot in the last 10 years. We totally don't recommend this one because, you know, because of the factors that make a dedicated server. Now, it costs usually well over $150 a month. Pros, you know, you get more power and reliability than a shared web host and no neighbors. So it's all you, your site, your traffic. Cons though, it's expensive. It limits the size of your server. You know, you have to buy the whole server so instead of just kind of scaling up to what you need. Uh, and it's not very easy to scale up to something else. So anyway, VPS is much more cost effective. And what's a VPS? Virtual private server. So it's uh -huh. kind of a cross between a shared web host and a dedicated box, meaning that you're still sharing a box with other people, but you just have a very few neighbors with dedicated resources assigned just to you. So it's like high end shared hosting. It's like a high end share, and it's high end, I can't even say that, high end shared hosting. How did he say that? But it's what we use and it's what we recommend because it's very easy with a flip of a switch, you can scale up to as much bandwidth as you need. You get as much mm -hmm. resources, you can actually scale the amount of RAM you have, all that good stuff. Cost starts as low as $50 a month, and then as you expand your resources, the cost goes up from there. So yeah. the pros, super fast, cost effective. You know, you can start cheap and work your way up. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage though, you still have neighbors, okay? And you've got to be careful of your VPS provider because they may oversell to too many neighbors and then you're back in the same boat as shared hosting. We've tried a bunch of them. We have found one, exactly one that is amazing, the one we're on. And we're going to tell you that one in a little bit. Now, number four, cloud web hosting. This is very interesting. This is sort of the bleeding edge of web hosting. And think of it as hundreds of web servers. You know, this company, this web host company has hundreds of web servers all working together. And when you buy, a, when you buy a web service and you set up a website on there, all their web servers can answer for your site. So basically there are hundreds of web servers all serving all the sites. If one web host, if one of those servers goes poof, it's okay, all the other ones make up for it. If your site suddenly gets a thousand times the traffic, it just handles it, no problem. In theory, it sounds amazing and wonderful and great. In real life, it doesn't quite work that way. But there's one more thing he didn't mention too. Uh -oh. Those servers can be all around the world. Ah, that's right. So that right. you're serving up your content to that part of the world as quickly as possible. Exactly, uh, and I had that somewhere. But yeah, that's right. And that, that should, that's one portion that we do use on our own side too. We use a VPS combined with some cloud hosting just for our static content. And the people in Japan browsing our website, which is actually hosted like in Maryland somewhere, they get all those static images and CSS files from their local server in Japan. And this is off topic, but what happened to our performance when we did that? We offloaded oh the static. God. content it either See, VPS, decreased our speed by half or by half the vps allowed us crazy. to really grow very quickly and efficiently and offloading our static content to a cloud provider which we're going to go into in a lot more detail later it got our page load speed down to half so which is really we went from important. like just over a second response time we're done that's confusing the two yeah. terms but down to you know just a few milliseconds so, so just so think about that get, but getting back to cloud hosting there are really two kinds there's offloading your whole site to this cloud host tech ain't really there yet. Some people tell you it is. We don't do it because it ain't. Okay, there are too many sites like that who go down too, way Bleeding too edge. often. Bleeding edge. Yeah, sites that go down way too often. Anyway, or you can move just your static content to a cloud. That's very good. So, pros, you pay only for what you eat. That's the nice thing about cloud hosting. You pay mm -hmm. only for what you eat, only the, con the bandwidth you use, and it scales instantly, which is great. Cons, you pay for all you eat. So a badly written PHP script or a bug in one of your plugins or a denial of service attack can really make your bill go up a lot. Okay, so here's our recommendation. Okay, if you're just getting started, start with shared web hosting. That'll get you good, you know, up to, I don't know, 100,000 page views or That's something a month. You know, once you start moving beyond that, 
don't go to a dedicated server. Okay, we don't recommend that. Jump over to VPS, and then as your traffic and everything continues to grow and you start noticing the performance glitches that will come along with that, move your static content off onto a cloud server. Absolutely. That's what we do, that's what we recommend. Absolutely. Now, which is the best shared web host and which is the best VPS web host? Well, we recommend the ones that we use and have used over time, the best ones. We've tried a lot of them. So, but to get the full write up on these, which ones we recommend, go to our website, blogsuccessjournal.com. Click on the top right where it says resources and we'll lay out our you favorite You see everything hosts. we recommend. Our favorite host and all kinds of other resources. There's just blogsuccessjournal.com resources.